Live, 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 live. We're live. Here we are. Hey, everybody. Welcome, everybody. This is Bruce here with Traveling with Bruce. How you doing today? Uh, today is Wednesday, uh, January 31st. I didn't even look at my notes. It's the last day of the month, and I've been looking at my month end stats all day long. <laughs> oh, what a month. What a month. What a week. What a year. Oh, what a, what a world. Uh, welcome to my channel. Um, for those of you who have never been here before, you're looking at Bruce with Traveling with Bruce. I'm in Creston, British Columbia here in Canada, and I am uh, three miles north of the uh, Idaho border. Um, so I keep you, I keep an eye on you guys all the time, um, <laughs> with my American friends. Uh, this channel, Traveling with Bruce, uh, talks about traveling. I do videos about uh, uh, finding a great deal for you, like uh, you want to go on a cruise? Uh, you want to know what it's like being on a cruise? If you've never been on one, haven't been on one for a while, uh, you want to know what's going on in the cruise business? Uh, you're thinking of taking a cruise? You know someone that's thinking of taking a cruise? This is the channel. Uh, we're talking cruise ships. We're talking cruise lines, deals, news, changes, upgrades, uh, you name it. Uh, we, I also have videos about uh, traveling in Europe, trips that I've been on, cruises I've been on. I have a playlist called so I know you like a good story. And that is a playlist full of some stories that people say, that can't be true. You're, you're making this up. It, it's all fallacy. There's no way it's true. But I'm telling you, there are stories in there. There are true stories. People I've met, uh, things have happened to me or, or my mom and dad. Uh, there's a story in there about the Beatles. I'm telling you right now, there's a story in there about the Beatles and my dad, how they made my dad a million dollars in 1964. You want to find out how that happened? Just check out my playlist called So I Know You Like a Good Story, and you'll find my Beatle video. It's right there. True. It happened. I'm not I'm not making this stuff up. It's How can you make stuff like this up? It's, it's got to be true. Anyway, uh, thanks for joining me today. Um, today, we're going to be talking about all kinds of things in the cruise business and uh, travel business. I have some stories. I have some uh, Dumb questions from travelers that I found again today. I want to share some more of those with you. I love I love dumb questions. Uh, and I also want to just give you an update on how my channel is doing. This is the end of the month. This is the end of January. And uh, I started the month with about uh, 200 and, uh, or three, 203, 205 subscribers. I had just finished December, which was an unbelievable month. I started them that month with 70 subscribers, came out with 200. And uh, I hit my first 100 subscribers on December the 13th, I think it was. It took me three months. September, I started in August, so September, October, November, four months. It took me four months, 120 days to get 100 subscribers. I just took a look at my stats. Uh, the last 100 subscribers I, I received, eight days. Eight days I've added 100 subscribers to my channel. And that's how fast it's growing now. It's, it's unbelievable. I cannot believe it. I love it. I'm so grateful to you folks out there who are watching me. Um, the last time I was on the air yesterday, uh, I was at 443 subscribers, and uh, right now, 456. 13 more since yesterday. It's uh, like a 3% growth rate per day. It's unbelievable, but I can tell you, I, have, I had about 1,300 views, <laughs> and it's it's one subscriber for every 100 views. It sort of seems how it works out right now. It's like a one percenter, and uh, I'm just hoping to get 2,000 views a day. I need 20 viewers. I need more subscribers. The big deal about subscribers for me, just so you know, is uh, about a week and a half ago, YouTube announced new new rules to be a monetized channel. And those of you who are watching, you probably saw a commercial before you got to watch me. And uh, the commercial is how I get paid. Um, I get paid like a penny or so, a half a penny an ad. Depends on the ad and, and uh, how long it is and stuff. And if you let the ad run, then I get paid. Uh, but anyway, um, I'm a monetized channel right now. I hit 10,000 viewers back in October, and that qualified me to be monetized. And I think since I've been monetized, I've made about, uh, oh, up until a few days ago, I think I had made about $100 <laughs> in like three months. <laughs> but the other day, I set a record. I made $4.80 in one day. Four eighty. That's a new all-time high for me. And I figured you break that down in 12 hours, uh, that's $0.40 cents an hour. I'm, I'm up to $0.40 cents an hour wages now doing this full time. This is fantastic. It's coming on. I'm getting up to minimum wage in no time. <laughs> but here's the problem. I might not be a monetized channel in three weeks because uh, YouTube changed the rules. They said that you have to have 4,000 hours of view time in the last year or so. I passed that milestone on Saturday a few days ago. 
And uh, I'm now, it looks like I'm going to do 4,000 hours a month the way my channel is going. It's fantastic. But the uh, subscriber count, you have to have 1,000 subscribers for your channel to remain monetized. Otherwise, you're, you're out. You're back out into the, uh, the amateur world. And then you got to work your way back into monetization. So I've been pleading with all of my subscribers to tell their friends and neighbors and relatives and, and pals at work and all of my friends and anyone else that I come across. I'm asking you to retweet my, uh, my tweets or share a video that I've done in the past with your friends on Facebook or whatever it takes. Get the word out that Bruce needs help. He has to get to 1,000 subscribers in 20 days. So 456 is great, but 544 still to come. Um, but I'll tell you, uh, 55,400 views between now and then, I'll get there. And uh, you divide that into 20 days, and that's about 2,700 views average per day. And I'm now pushing as high as 1,500 views just a couple days ago. I wouldn't be surprised by the weekend. I'll, I'll have a 2,000 view day by next week, 22, 2,400 views. Got to get to that 2,700 average, so I'll have to go past that. But if I can pile on the views and grow the channel like it's growing, I'll make 1,000 subscribers. It, it just blows my mind that it'll happen. But I never thought at the beginning of December when I had 70 subscribers, I'd be talking to you on January 31 that I have 456. Unthinkable. That's 386 subscribers. Where did they come from? I don't know any of you people. It's fantastic. Welcome to my channel. Okay, I got some folks who have said hi to me already. If you're just watching me for the first time or you haven't been here before, uh, sign in, uh, text in. Tell me where, where are you? What town are you from? Where, where are you watching me from? What's your temperature going to be today for the high? Here where I am in Creston, BC, it's quite sunny out. You can see the shine on my face here. Uh, it's about 40 degrees out, and we've been cloudy all day, but right now the sun is peeking through, but I think we're about to lose the sunshine. There's a big band of clouds over here. But we've been melting whatever snow we have left. Uh, Teresa is here uh, from Waterloo, Ontario. Hi, Teresa. How you doing? Uh, Teresa is telling me it's minus 6 today in Waterloo, Ontario. That's minus 6 Celsius for you Americans. And that means that is about 22 degrees Fahrenheit. We'll give it about 10 degrees. Elizabeth is here. Hi, Elizabeth. How you doing? Angela is here. Hi, Angela. How you doing? Uh, Dylan is here from Henderson, Nevada. Hey, Bruce. How are you today? Beautiful day here in southern Nevada. Nice 80 degrees with a breeze. Fantastic. I know the other day you had some crazy windy weather the other day. Way to go, Dylan. Welcome uh, welcome back. Uh, got about four or five of you so far. And uh, like I say, just sign in and say hi. Uh, Elizabeth is saying 66 here in Daytona Beach. Fantastic. Angela, 70 degrees here in Tampa. Of course it's 70 degrees in Tampa. You got to love that. Was it? Isn't that great? Uh, Crash 3X is here from Ottawa, Ontario. Minus 12 uh, Celsius and snowing. So it's going to be about uh, 15 to 18 degrees Fahrenheit, somewhere in there. Uh, cool, that snow's not melting. <laughs> the only way that snow melts, salt from the from the street, uh, from the plows. That's the only way that snow is melting. Uh, it's cold. Welcome one and all. Great to have you back. And uh, like I say, if you're just joining in and, and pile on in, come on in. William's here. Hey, William, how you doing, buddy? 40 degrees here in Loveland, Colorado. Welcome, uh, William. It's great to have you on board. Uh, thanks for signing in, letting me know. Uh, it's great to have you guys here. You, have, you guys have any questions about cruising or traveling, whatever. Those of you who are regulars, you know, just fire away. Um, any comments about what's going on in the cruise business or the airline world or traveling in general, let's talk. I'm open to whatever you want to talk about. For those of you who've never been here before, uh, again, it's an open uh, Q&A. Uh, I've got a couple of topics I'm going to bring up today as suggestions and ideas, and then we kind of bounce off from there and we have some fun. Um, what's I going to mention also? Oh, yeah, those of you who are watching this video uh, as a video, because uh, an hour or half an hour after we go off, uh, after I cut, cut off the live stream, this becomes just a regular video on my channel after I title it and give it a thumbnail. Uh, you'll note that uh, what I'm doing here is I'm reading the comments that people are typing in because you can't see them. If you're watching this video tonight or tomorrow or next week, uh, you aren't part of the live and you don't get to see the interaction. And the folks here are talking to each other. Uh, sometimes saying hi to each other and they're answering each other's questions when you know by the time I read it out there's someone already answering the question uh, and so I try to just read the comments so that you folks at home know what the heck's going on because why is this guy talking to himself and and talking to all these texts what what is this stuff that's what I'm doing it's a live stream and uh, we have no idea what we're what we're going to say to each other and where it's going it's just kind of a free-for-all it's great oh we've got a pouty gorilla here <laughs> Bowdy Gorilla, I love that name. Uh, howdy from Virginia Beach, 31 Fahrenheit. Nice to be with you. Hey, welcome. Uh, welcome, Pouty Gorilla from Virginia Beach. That's fantastic. That's a newbie. Crash3X is saying, uh, did you see the video of the woman who tried to take her 
service peacock on the United flight, even paid for a seat for the massive bird and got refused. Laugh out loud. <laughs> I did see the uh, thumbnail for that and the description. And as soon as I saw that, I, I think it was on Google as well, and I caught like the first sentence or two of the article, and it, the whole story was told to me right there. I had to go no further. <laughs> I saw a picture of this massive peacock, and the tail had to have been four feet long. I mean, my God, I, I'm wondering about the poor person that was going to sit beside him. Uh, what if it's a three-row seat and uh, she took the middle uh, seat for the bird and she had the window seat? Or what if you had the window seat and the bird got the middle seat and she had, to, oh, no, that would, I would, I'd get off that plane. I would just walk off that plane and say, you find my bag if you want, but I'm not flying on, there's no way this bird, this bird with a beak this long. <laughs> No chance. <laughs> Even if I had safety goggles, I wouldn't sit beside that thing. Oh, man. Mirage 580 is here. 58 degrees here in Panama City. Mirage 580, welcome. Uh, if you're a newbie, welcome to the channel today. Welcome to our, our little uh, live stream. Angela A., I was going to say the same story. The bird is really weird. No kidding. Oh, it's crazy. Uh, Elizabeth uh, is asking, has anyone cruised the uh, two-day cruise to the Bahamas? Uh, out of Palm Beach. I booked it and I know it's an old carnival ship, but I'm hoping I didn't waste my money. Uh, Elizabeth, you couldn't have paid too much. Uh, <laughs> you couldn't have paid too much. Uh, I'm sure you'll be fine. Um, uh, let, I'm thinking your cruise is not too long from now, if I recall. So your weather, I hope, is okay. Uh, weather, I'm talking temperature, like it won't be too cold because you are going to be heading a bit north to get to the uh, Bahamas. Um, it's a popular run, uh, apparently, and the ship does have, uh, you know, most amenities that. It has amenities all, all cruise ships have, except it doesn't have a lot of balconies, obviously. It, it's an older carnival ship that got picked up by the by this outfit. Um, but for the, for what you're paying and for the, for the couple, you'll, you'll be fine. Uh, you'll be fine. But I, I'm hoping that it'll give you a taste of a little bit of the sailing life. But really, uh, it sets you up, I hope, for like a one-week cruise, uh, you know, out of, out of, uh, out of uh, Fort Lauderdale or out of uh, Port Canaveral or out of Miami. Uh, and there are all kinds of deals uh, right now and right up until even April. I mean, I'm surprised this year at how low prices are for Caribbean cruises this season. Um, I usually by, by uh, you know, February now, uh, mid-February and beyond, the, the rates for, for uh, balcony cruises at least are, uh, you know, 100 a day at best. And then they're up from that, you know, up towards over 150 a day or more. But I'm seeing cruises uh, for uh, under 700 bucks. Uh, for for a week long cruise in, with a balcony uh, on 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 a Caribbean run, and maybe the hurricanes have something to do with it. Maybe uh, the fact that St. Thomas got ripped up and St. Martin got all ripped up, and of course San Juan, Puerto Rico, and Puerto Rico in general, Saint Croix, um, uh, what is it, uh, Dominica, uh, Saint Bart's. A number of these stops really got hit and hurt badly, and. Uh, Passengers have decided, you know, I'm going to take a year off. I'm not going to, I'm not going to cruise this year in the Caribbean. I'll do a Mexican cruise, or I'll take a cruise in the Western Caribbean, or take a cruise that does uh, maybe, uh, uh, you know, uh, say Cozumel and uh, and Honduras, or uh, uh, you know, a few stops over on the far, you know, the Western end of the Caribbean. I'm not going to bother. That that might be what's going on. I'm just, uh, I'm just guessing. Um, <laughs> Crash Three X is talking about this. <laughs> Peacock, as you're saying, uh, could you imagine if it plumped its feathers <laughs> on a United Airlines? The airline did the right thing. No, you can't bring the bird on board. You book. I'm sure she booked the ticket online and didn't tell him that it was a bird until she got there. Oh my God. Oh, that's funny. Uh, Trisha, 502. Hi, Bruce. I'm new and glad I found your post. Trisha, welcome. Trisha, it's fantastic. Tell us, Trisha, where are you, and what's your high temperature going to be today? Uh, we got folks here from uh, we got folks here from Daytona. We got folks here from Ottawa. We got folks here from uh, uh, Henderson, Nevada. Uh, me, Creston, British Columbia, Canada. It's forty degrees, maybe 38, 40 degrees. Sunny. I'm three miles north of the Idaho border. Where are you at? Uh, let us know. Elizabeth uh, is saying I booked a Carnival Breeze in March of 2019 for seven days. Way to go, Elizabeth. There's your there. If that's your second cruise, you, you're gonna have a great time. I, I know it. Um, and then a party gorilla. I just heard that the uh, cruise was pleasant. No nasty surprises for my friends. Th this is. I'm assuming you're talking about the cruise to the Bahamas and back. Uh, great. Uh, yeah. I 
I, I can't imagine it would be a bad cruise. Uh, unless, of course, you went through a terrible storm, but uh, not this time of year. Hurricane season long gone. Oh, Trisha502, Alabama, 60-ish. Right on. Right on. Welcome, Trisha. It's great to have you. Uh, Crash3x, well, I am considering a service camel since it's update. Yes. <laughs> Uh, let's see if we can get a camel on the on the plane. If we can't get a uh, a peacock, oh man, I I I I always thought that peacocks could be nasty birds. Uh, depending on the male or the female side, I I don't know. I mean, geez, that's unbelievable. Uh, Mike Hamilton here. Uh, Mike, how you doing? It's thirty degrees in Jersey. He's saying, yeah, you're colder than I am. Uh, but I think you passed the uh, that that nor'easter's gone, right? You you had it come through and it's gone. Hopefully. And you're done with it. Uh, Elizabeth saying, are you a travel agent, Bruce? Because I found one uh, online through vlogs, and she's really great so far. Uh, no, I'm not a travel agent. I, I don't uh, represent anybody. Um, I'm, I'm a traveler like uh, most of us out there, and I'm uh, passionate about, uh, about the, the trade, and uh, I'm, I'm my own travel agent, really. Um, and um, I don't work for anybody, and I'm not sponsored by anyone in that capacity. So uh, what I'm telling you is uh, what I know, what I hear, what I'm uh, watching, and uh, it's unbiased because I don't have to protect any, uh, you know, airline or company or anything like that. Now, having said all that, if Royal Caribbean wanted to call me up and say, hey, Bruce, uh, how would you like to be a spokesman for our line? I, I'd, I'd say something like, well, um, I could, but, uh, you know, you'd have to pay me dearly because I'd give up what I'm doing here, and I love what I'm doing here. I love being the independent and talk about any cruise ship I want, any cruise line I want, any airline I want. Uh, you know, that kind of thing. So <laughs> I'm, so to answer your question, I'm not a travel agent, uh, but I, there are a few on the, uh, on the net. There are a few that are on, the, uh, on YouTube that, you know, do that and also cruise or fly and whatever, and then they try to, uh, you know, ask for your business and that kind of thing. And hey, hey you know, whatever works, works. Um, I love shopping around for deals, as, as you regulars know out there. Uh, I'm always looking for deals. Uh, I'm on the internet like most of us are. I'll, I'll do the Expedia thing. I'll do the Orbitz uh, thing. Uh, I like uh, kayak.com, K-A-Y-A-K.com for airfare. It's a it's a comparison thing. I like that. Uh, and then on on cruising, uh, I, I rather enjoy using vacationstogo.com. I, I find vacationstogo.com quite handy, uh, and it gives me the opportunity and the flexibility to narrow my search down to either one cruise line, a single ship, uh, or cruises that are seven days long, or cruises that are more than 14 days, or I can break the, the, the search down to regions. So if I want to see every cruise in March for the Caribbean, seven-day cruises only, I can look for that. I can narrow that down to just Norwegian only, Norwegian cruise lines. Or I can take that whole thing down down to the Jade only, I mean, or the Epic, whatever I want. So I love that site for that kind of you know narrowness and or the wide side, especially when it comes to repositioning cruises, because repositioning cruises are the killer deal of killer deals. You can get a massive bargain on a repositioning cruise uh, but you got to be prepared to pay the price. And the price is you leave from Port A, might be Fort Lauderdale, and you end up in Port B, which might be Southampton or Rome or Barcelona. And it's a 14-day, 15, 16, could be 20-day long cruise with, a, with stops here and there along the way. Uh, but the price you're getting that cruise for is so darn cheap. It's, it's less than the meals. <laughs> I mean, you're going to eat more in food they will cost them more to pay their staff to make you the meals and clean the dishes and clean your bed and change your sheets and give you fresh towels. They'll lose money on you. That's how low the deal is. But a repositioning cruise is not necessarily a moneymaker for a cruise line. It's a, um, a repositioning cruise is sort of a subsidizer. It helps subsidize the loss of moving a ship from the Caribbean to, say, the Mediterranean from winter to spring. And they have to move it anyway. And the crew can't be flown over. They're going to be taken over by on the ship. Well, you might as well give the crew something to do and uh, uh, have them keep working and look after passengers and tip money. And, you know, the casino's open and, you know, the specialty restaurants are going. So there's a way to mitigate the loss for the cruise line. So they're offering it at practically cost. And that's where you get the deal of deals. So that's where I love, I love uh, repositioning cruises. You regulars know this. Uh, you newbies don't. And uh, or you you probably know it yourself or you don't, but whatever. Now, uh, what else we got here? Um, Elizabeth saying, are you traveling cruise, uh, 
I'm up to speed on my messages. Again, anyone joining me now who's new, that's live, uh, tell us where you're from. Where are you watching us from? What, uh, what, uh, what's your high temperature going to be today? Uh, and we'll pass it along. The, the gang here will say hi to you. Those are already in the air. They'll all say hi to the newbies. And if you have any questions, just fire away. Any comments, fire away. Today, uh, a couple of tidbits of information for you that, I, that I've come across. I read this morning that um, Norwegian has announced the name of their latest ship. Uh, they're building a, a new one called the Encore. And um, this uh, ship is in the same class as the uh, existing ships, Escape uh, and Norwegian Joy, those two. And it is also in the same class as the new ship coming out um, March called the Bliss, Norwegian Bliss. And so the Norwegian Encore will be the newest uh, version of this uh, uh, class of ship. 4,000 passengers is the size. Uh, it'll be the last one in this category that they're building. It's the, it'll be the fourth and last, I guess, of this version. Uh, and it's going to launch uh, fall 2019. It's um, uh, targeted to be based out of Miami. And so it'll be a Caribbean uh, uh, cruiser. Um, I had read a little tidbit about this ship that it was originally, when first conceived and first announced, that it was going to be based for uh, China. It was going to be based out of China, maybe uh, maybe Shanghai or, or uh, Hong Kong. I'm not going to talk exactly what port they were talking about. And I have a feeling that, yeah, uh, there have been there are changes going on with regard to China and cruising um, right now and going forward for a while. Um, because of the North Korea, South Korea tensions, the sanctions stuff, um, China, its relationship with the North and the South, and then there's Japan. There's there's a bit of tension here, and um, the deal has been that if you want to operate a cruise ship in out of China, like to, to have Chinese uh, nationals go on your cruise ship, like Royal Caribbean has, Carnival has, um, the deal has been that you had to use Chinese-based travel agencies to book the cruises because the Chinese nationals. Uh, they have their passports, their visas, and they had to be approved by the government to be allowed to even leave their country, uh, even go on a cruise, especially if it's going to visit other ports. And a number of cruise lines were organizing Japanese ports, um, South Korean ports for these cruises. Um, but there's tension right now in the in the wind with North and South Korea, and the Chinese government got a little uh, testy a few months ago, and they put restrictions on their nationals being able to go to certain countries, just like that, like that. And so all cruises canceled, or all their cruises were canceled, and they were denied boarding. And this just just throws cruise companies into a loop of confusion, and it screws up the dollars because you've got these, you know, uh, cruise ships holding three, four thousand people and fifteen, sixteen hundred crew members. Uh, that were supposed to, you know, do three months of cruising in this region, and all of a sudden those cruises are canceled. Well, what are we going to do with the ship now? Now what do we do? Well, we can move it to Australia, perhaps, or we can move it to New Zealand, or maybe we can move it to, to uh, you know, from Bangkok and 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 to Manila in the Philippines. We can, but you have to organize all this on the fly at the last minute, and you're going to offer cruises that have like a, a one month lead time. How much time do you folks need to plan a cruise with your jobs? with your uh, your family, uh, you know, bills that you have to prepay at home or look after or someone to look after the house while you're gone. You've got pets. Uh, you know, we can't just necessarily drop everything every time and go. So to set up a cruise uh, for a cruise ship like that is tough. And so there were deals offered for cruises out there and, um, and uh, itineraries were all screwed up. The ships were all designed with all the entertainment for the Chinese audience. That isn't going to be there anymore. Well, now you got to get rid of the entertainment or lay those folks off, sorry to say, or have them change their act. Oh, what a nightmare. So the Norwegian, here's a subtle little announcement. Oh, yeah? You guys are going to play those games with your uh, with your own people? I'll tell you what we'll do. We're not even going to bring the brand new ship to China. We're going to, we're going to take it to Miami. We'll bring it out of Miami instead. And we'll maybe take the Jade and we'll put it somewhere else or we'll take the Epic and move it somewhere else. We can do that, but you think we're going to commit two years from now a eight hundred million dollar vessel to your ports where you guys might change your mind like that? I don't think so. Uh, that's not that's not how we play ball. So trouble in paradise uh, over in Asia. So I'm not sure what's going to happen. 
Um, what can I say? This is the stuff we're we're hearing about. Um, let's see here. Elizabeth is asking me or saying, Bruce, do any of the lines offer a drink package that only one passenger can purchase? I, I drink and my husband doesn't. On Carnival, they don't allow us to just buy one drink package. Yeah, this is uh, this is uh, true of several lines, uh, and it didn't start off that way. <laughs> but what happened was, of course, uh, you had two drinkers, and one said, "I don't drink." And so they sold just one drink package to the drinker, and uh, you know the, um, the 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 husband uh, wasn't the drinker. He was always carrying around a coffee cup, and uh, boy, he he loved that cup of coffee all day long. Yeah, that's because uh, the wife would order a beer, and then uh, a little while later she'd order uh, you know a cocktail, and the beer uh, but beer bottles empty. Yeah, but the coffee cup's full, and it's full of the beer, and. Uh, they were clamping down on this practice. And so the cruise lines have been trying to figure out how do we, how do we police this? And uh, people are sneaky. I mean, they'll go into the bathrooms and they'll go to their suite. They'll go back to their cabin and, and you know, do the drink swap a there. And then, you know, the wife comes out first and then 10 minutes later, the husband comes out. So Carnival and others have said, enough of that. We're making them buy one for each of them. And if you want a drink package, that's the deal, which of course has killed a whole bunch of people buying a drink package like yourself elizabeth because you want to buy you want to pay double the price for only drinking your drinks doesn't make any sense for you does it so yeah it's a it's a problem so some cruises uh you, you might get away with it i've had a few comments on my live streams where a few people said oh yeah i was on uh, the so-and-so uh with this cruise line and they let us buy just a single drink package it wasn't a big deal and there's that i've also had uh one of my uh, viewers say to me uh, a few weeks ago that they had a drink package, uh, and <laughs> only only one, and that they uh, tipped the server a couple of bucks when the server brought the first drink, and then uh, the second time around, the uh, the uh, person uh, with the drink package, they asked her, uh, "What would you like to have? I'll have a rum and coke." And then the server looked at the husband and said, "What would you like?" And the husband's going, "Well, I don't have a drink package." And the server said, "What would you like?" And they said, "Well, I'll have a rum and coke." And so uh, two rum and cokes showed up on the drink package and uh, it was only charged for one and the server took care of them. Now that is against the cruise lines rules, but the server is the one pouring the drinks as well. And uh, they kept giving her a one, $1 tip every time she brought the drinks and uh, you get a $1 tip as a cruise member in cash, that's yours. You don't have to share that with anybody else. So this can happen. Uh, I wouldn't count on it. I wouldn't be asking about it. I wouldn't be confronting a cruise member for that kind of deal, you don't want to tip your hand. Uh, but again, you know, drink drink packages are drink packages and rules are rules. Sometimes they're a little more generous than other times. I don't know. Uh, what do we got here? Uh, uh, Crash UX is saying, uh, she's saying, so Celebrity has started removing the glass blowing shows on Celebrity. <clears throat> I was too busy on the Equinox to see it and apparently now I never will. <laughs> yeah. And you know what could have happened there? Uh, the sales might just not be justifying the uh, the expense. Uh, the individual who's doing the glass blowing is a pro, and maybe they're you know they're just sick and tired of the uh, the the cruise world life. It's just too much. Maybe the company that employed them uh, is paying them so little, or is demanding that they push their product on a commission sale basis so hard that uh, they're just not uh, interested. And or, you know, it's been a few years, ran its course, uh, and here we are so many years later, and on the celebrity lines, maybe 60% of the passengers are repeat clients, and they come back once every three to four years, on average, and they've seen this show, and the, the attendance is dropping. It's just me guessing, uh, but that could be the answer. Uh, yeah, interesting. Uh, Teresa saying, unfortunately, no regarding the drink packages. Yeah, Teresa, again, we don't know uh, about anyone else. Uh, 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 Tisha502 is saying, uh, is asking, do you think it's uh, a good or not so good idea to sail on the first 10 or so cruises on a new ship? Uh, the first 10 or so cruises on a new ship. Okay. And let me tell you a little story about what's making the rounds right now. And all these folks who are on the, uh, chat with me and my regulars, they can all attest to this. We have been watching videos and we've been hearing stories and they're coming. They're going to keep coming at us 
uh, about the brand new ship called the MSC Seaside. The MSC Seaside is a one of a kind, uh, first of its kind, I guess really the way to say this, new design for a cruise ship. It looks stunning, looks beautiful. And the video I've seen for some of the inside shots, fantastic. The uh, the uh, atrium is stunning. The uh, the uh, uh, the balcony areas and the pool areas and the, the water slides. Wow, this ship really has some pretty neat feature features to it. However, uh, we've been noticing uh, again. I'm pointing at my phone, which is where I'm reading my text messages here. We have been noticing and hearing about people uh, experiencing nightmare conditions on the MSC Seaside. <clears throat> Not for its stunning beauty, but for its stunning odor. <laughs> plumbing problems seems to be the big problem here. Big time plumbing issues. Uh, sinks in the public bathrooms leaking from beneath the counter. Pipes bursting, basically. Uh, in cabins, uh, toilets backing up. Uh, sewage coming up through the shower nozzle, like below the shower, coming into the floor of the shower stall, overflowing and on the floor of the bathroom. Uh, crews are scrambled, are being scrambled all over the place to clean it up and try to stop it. And it just keeps coming. These 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 stories just keep coming. And and I saw a video yesterday from another YouTuber. She's a regular on, on cruises, does a lot of cruises. And she was just on the seaside with her daughter and she was talking about the smell on the ship. And she could smell it in the atrium now. Now the smell is, is permeated into the public area of the atrium. Well, that's eight stories tall, which means it, you know, it goes out. All the hallways go through there, right? <clears throat> so this is a warning to people out there. If you're thinking of going on a cruise on a brand new inaugural vessel, first time ever a cruise, you're going to run into glitches. Now, they may not be as bad as this or as you know uncomfortable as this. They might be a whole bunch of little things. Or it might be stuff like the ship just isn't finished yet. Uh, the interior finishes just aren't done. And they still have guys painting and lacquering and uh, finishing carpet installing, uh, all kinds of you know last-minute stuff that they're cramming in in the first or two or three cruises they still have workers on board in various areas of the ship to get this last stuff done, mainly cosmetics, not necessarily engineering. But on the engineering side, yes, there can be unbelievable problems on the engineering side. And this is the MSC problem right now. The seaside has got serious plumbing issues, and they haven't they haven't been able to solve it yet, from what I'm hearing. And uh, you know, I'm I'm watching for 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 news updates from anyone else out there. It's crazy. Another tip for you is if you're thinking of going on a cruise and the ship just came out of what we call dry dock, which is a, a ship that's uh, you know been on at sea for a while. Every five years, these ships are brought in to dry dock. They put them on blocks, literally, take drain the water out of that little area, and they get underneath the ship, work on the hull, work on the azopods or whatever they got to do down there, reline the hull or, or get all the barnacles off, whatever. And then they're inside the ship, and they're replacing all the carpeting. They're replacing television sets. They're replacing old dishes. Uh, towels, linens, mattresses are all being t tossed. New mattresses are coming in. It's a big deal. $3 million a day to dry dock a ship. So two to five, six weeks could be a $100 million refit. You don't want to be on that ship the first couple of cruises when it comes back out of dry dock because same thing. They, they've got a 42-day schedule and the the uh, certain guys on that ship were supposed to start on day 22 with all the material that they had ordered, and it didn't arrive till day 25. And they're standing around waiting for the paint or the varnish or the carpeting or the tile or the whatever the problem is. And now they're scrambling to get the job done, and they are literally on that ship as it is sailing, picking up passengers in Miami or New York or wherever it's from, going on these cruises and these guys are working the ship and sleeping in the crew quarters downstairs and then working on that ship again to get it done and you don't want to be part of that because there could be a lot of cosmetic work being done in the public area that you're going to be frequenting and so you might be in part of a construction zone just thoughts so if you're going to cruise as a first timer cruise on a ship that's uh, at least a year old uh cruise on a ship that's got a whole bunch of positive reviews on it go to youtube and take a look at videos made by people who've been on that ship in the last three months it's easy to do uh you can do a google a youtube search for say the norwegian jade 
and uh, you'll see at the very top where your search bar is up there on YouTube. You can pick a video that's uh, one month old or newer or six month old or newer. Look at those videos and you'll see folks who've been on the Jade in the last month, month and a half. Even enter your room number that you're thinking of paying for or, or rooms that you found that are available and you might find a video of that room. Someone may have been in that room in the last two years and you can see what your room might look like. YouTube is a great way to, to do some research, okay? Anyway, that's a couple of thoughts there. Uh, let me just see, going back here on my uh, on my uh, thing here. Uh, no, there's something doing back at channel, watching she's super well. Okay. Uh, <laughs> just catching up here on the uh, uh, my messages. Sorry, folks, for those of you who are live. Um, uh, do you think it's a good idea to say, yeah, so no drink package. Uh, Angela's asking, uh, you can, some, or saying, sometimes, you can sometimes buy a 10 drink package. Yeah, sometimes you can get a drink package that's good for 10 drinks at a discount price. I saw that on my last Royal Caribbean cruise. Look for that. Uh, you can find that perhaps on the website for the cruise line uh, or tra ask your travel agent. They'll find that for you. Elizabeth's saying, I want, uh, Elizabeth's saying, uh, this is about the MSCC side. I watched her and she said the smell was horrible. This is why I chose the breeze again and not the horizon. Yeah, um, I think the horizon failed the safety inspection. That's what we're talking about there. Uh, Crash 3X, Elizabeth, if you were, uh, Crash is saying to Elizabeth, if you were on Celebrity and you didn't get, uh, if you didn't get P offered perks, you could get one classic drink pack and one non-alcoholic drink pack together. Oh, okay. Uh, you might be able to get, uh, um, you know, one of each uh, on, on, that, uh, on that deal. One, one drink package is for soft drinks. And for, for, for nice coffees, perhaps, and the other ones for alcohol. And if you buy one of each of those, they'll let you do that. Uh, it, again, celebrity might, others may not. Preferred, oops, typo, <laughs> not preferred. <laughs> Crash, I'm, I'm just reading it as I go. I mean, you type that in, I'm, I'm reading it. <laughs> preferred. Angela saying, uh, I think also if you tell that one has a problem with alcohol, they'll let you buy the one package, but they may keep an eye on you. <laughs> so don't abuse it uh, if you get the offer. And then uh, Teresa saying the uh, same with the Norwegian Cruise Line. When you choose the drink package uh, perk, one can have the drink package and the other can have the soda package. Well, there you go. I, I think that's very fair, uh, very reasonable. Uh, Paula Kay is here. Paula, how are you? Uh, hi, Bruce, 25 in Hanover, holding steady. Uh, Paula Kay is here. Paula, I, I just want to say to everybody out there who's watching, uh, I don't think Paula was here yesterday, but I want the world to know that uh, Paula Kay was my uh, first person that was able to say hi to me on one of my first uh, live streams. But my first ever live stream watcher was Crash 3X. Uh, Crash, you're number one. Paula, you're number two, but you're both number one in my heart. And I just want to mention that. Thanks, Paula, for joining us today. It's great that you're here. Uh, Crash 3X, would you still have to do a two drink package, but you can select the type of drink uh, drink packages. I'm, I'm not sure. You still have to do a two drink pack, but you can still select the type of drink packs. Yeah, I guess you know one of you has to have one, one of you has to have another. Uh, that makes sense. Um, I know that uh, <laughs> uh, Paula's saying the cold is sticking around for a while. Yeah, 25 in Hanover, PA. It's not going away for you, is it? We're about 40 here in sunny, uh, beautiful days, and we're going up to 50 next week. 50. Vivid. It's going to be great. Vivid. Uh, <laughs> Crash X just gave, gave me a heart. Um, and Paula K, thanks, Bruce. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's winter, and uh, we're here in Creston now for February, we should be in that five to seven Celsius range, which will kind of push us around 40 degrees uh, to 45 degrees. Uh, so yeah, we'll see if it works for us. These drink packages are, uh, they're, uh, they're, they're simple, straightforward, complex and complicated. <laughs> okay. Uh, I know that there's the, uh, the alcohol package. There's the standard alcohol package. Then there's the premium alcohol uh, package. There's the soft, drink type package then there's a soft drink package that lets you buy premium coffees in the the bistro and then there's the bistro package where you can buy the premium coffees but you can't buy the soft drinks and then they have the 10 for and, and that's the uh the the one that was one person was mentioning the 10 you get 10 tokens or, or you get a card that you get stamped 10 times or something like that, or they add it to your room card. And every time you get a drink, they scan the card in the scanner and it tells you, you got six drinks left. You have five drinks left and you get a 10 drink package for a flat rate deal. But it's, again, if it's an alcohol deal, it's likely to be, uh, you know, the regular, the bar rye, the bar vodka, 
but on a cruise, you know, they've got they, they've got decent booze there. I mean, it's not like you're going to drink gut rot or anything like that. I've, had, I've never heard anyone complain about the quality of the alcohol. But then again, if you drink enough of it, <laughs> why why complain? I suppose <laughs> one negates the other. I suppose volume makes up for the quality. I, I don't know. I'm not a drinker. I, I drink my diet diet caffeine free uh, diet cokes. Uh, free commercial for Coca Cola. Cheers, everybody. One hand. And uh, that's my drink of choice. And I don't even buy this. I don't even buy the soft drink package. I bring a couple of cases of cola with me and uh, have them in my fridge in the room. And I've got my sport mug and I'm good to go. I will buy six colas on the tour, on the cruise. You know, one week cruise, I'm not buying six of them at what, usually dinner time or at the buffet. I'll want one. I won't bring the sport cup with me necessarily. Uh, no big deal. Uh, if you're just joining me, folks, uh, those of you out there who are just joining us live, you've never been here before um type in and say hi tell us where are you watching us from what's your high temperature going to be today the gang here all the folks who are watching already they'll probably all say hi to you and walk you into the fold uh those of you who are watching this as a regular video uh thanks for my joining me on my channel traveling with bruce this is a live stream that you've caught uh, here and we're going to cover a number of topics but i'll tell you the topics sometimes change midstream in the video because youtubers and, and viewers here on my channel they come up with questions that just take us off to different tangents and we just go wherever we go it's a q a and uh, the floor is open to uh, thoughts cruise ideas and uh reviews and thoughts and whatever if you're a new cruiser you'll learn a lot uh and if you have any questions as a new cruiser or a regular cruiser or you want to know about what's going on in norwegian or whatever just just ask and we'll see if we can answer the question for you um we got uh, Charles. Charles Jordan's here. Hey, hi, Bruce. You saying uh, being watch? Been watching the Oasis sail from the port of Saint Martin. Oh man, how nice is that? Great to see you here, Charles. Uh, Tisha five hundred two is saying uh, uh, Tuscaloosa was twenty nine this morning. I feel like I live in two completely different worlds from the time I go to work and leave work. Yeah, I bet you. Right, it's cold in the morning and it's nice in the afternoon. Yeah. <laughs> unbelievable and i bet you get frost on your windshield sometimes in the morning because of the humidity you have to scrape it off yeah i believe it crash 3x uh uh teresa never got charged for her coffees last cruise it was crazy uh six uh six ppl six people two without package four with a drink package two drank alcohol two didn't <laughs> that's weird that's strange uh and uh, teresa, teresa is crash x's sister yeah, that's that's uh, weird stuff. Eh? That's weird stuff. Uh, yeah, this MSCC side thing, as I was touching on a little earlier about, I was going to talk about it today, and uh, one of our, you know, one of our uh, guests here happened to mention, should I go on a new cruise ship as a as a first time cruiser? We say don't do it, even as a veteran. Uh, I say it anyway. Avoid inaugural cruises because of the headaches. And right now, MSCC side is having problems, plumbing, and the smell apparently is awful. And it's making YouTube. Uh, YouTube people are videoing it. Thank God we don't have smell vision on YouTube. Thank God for that. Uh, but I was going to say that uh, for April, and that's obviously you know February, March, uh, three months from now, you can book an MSC Seaside balcony room uh, in April for six hundred twenty-three bucks, six hundred sixty dollars for the week per person. It's an exceptionally good price for a balcony room on on that kind of a ship. The hope is that, God, you'd think by then they'd have that plumbing thing figured out. I'm surprised that we're still hearing about it now after about three or four weeks. I'm still surprised. My, then again, maybe the videos we're watching on YouTube and the comments we're getting on YouTube, maybe these are from cruises that were two and three weeks ago, and the cruises now are fine. Uh, we'll find out in the next week or two if these stories keep coming, and we'll 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 know. Okay. Yeah, we'll have to see what happens. Elizabeth is saying, uh, we need to post tips and ideas on what to pack on a cruise. I have a ton, but I, I do have two kids, so it's a lot of info. Oh, yeah. Uh, I, I think maybe tomorrow. Why don't we do that tomorrow, and we'll talk about packing for a cruise. Ideas, suggestions, uh, tips, shortcuts, do's and don'ts. Um, you know, um, there's certain times that you, you, you don't pack something for a cruise. And you purposely buy it on the cruise. Like I'm talking t-shirts. You know, you're going down to the Caribbean and it's hot and sweaty. Buy some t-shirts on your holiday. Uh, remind you of the holiday. Maybe they've got the cruise logo, you know, the cruise ship logo on it. Maybe it's a St. Martin t-shirt. Anyway, let's talk, let's talk clothing and tips and all that tomorrow. Great subject because we can cover that for a whole lot of time. 
Um, what else we got here? My uh, Crash X is saying my cousin, my husband, kept ordering bizarre drinks, and would offer her a try, and they were horrid, but she kept falling for it. <laughs> is this your sister? Is is this what they were doing? <laughs> terrible, terrible. Oh, but fun. I get to get the camera out and catch the reaction on that facial expression when you zip that horrible concoction. Oh man, unbelievable. Uh, okay. One thing I was going to bring up today, if we ran out of things to talk about, was I was going to ask you guys, uh, have you ever had a situation where uh, you're at the airport or you're checking in for a cruise uh, and you got a surprise upgrade or you were able to upgrade for either a, a heck of a deal or points uh, or something like that? And I, I, it might be more applicable to airline deals. Uh, but it, I'm curious if anyone's ever been given an upgrade on a cruise cabin, either at the last minute, maybe you got contacted by your travel agent and they said, hey, listen, I just got a call from Norwegian, that cruise you're on, uh, they bumped you up from this category to this category. It's a big difference. I'm kind of curious to know if any of you got anything like that on a cruise. And I'm also curious whether any of you ever got an upgrade at the airport, uh, whether one was offered to you for free, a uh, surprise, anything like that. I have a story uh, that I'm going to mention today. Uh, I was on a uh, I was on a uh, uh, flight. My wife and I um, had visited our daughter. We were we flew from Canada to uh, London, from London to Berlin. We visited our daughter in Berlin, and then we flew back to uh, uh, we worked our way back, excuse me, to London by train actually over a few days via Paris. Did the channel. We're in uh, we're in um, we're in Heathrow and uh, and. Um, uh, we're coming back to Canada, and uh, uh, I have to correct myself. I'm sorry, folks, if I'm confusing too much. We flew from Calgary to London, London to Berlin. Then we were going to fly Berlin to London, London back to Calgary. Okay, this is April 2015. We land in Heathrow, and the deal is you get off that flight, and it's a British Airways uh, small plane, uh, Airbus A321. You have to go through the terminal. You have to come through the international wing. And you have to go into the international terminal. I think it's Terminal 4. Beautiful, big, gorgeous terminal with the fancy stores, the coach and the La Bouton and the, the high-end retailers. Those of you who've traveled there, you know which one I'm talking about. Well, before you can get into that terminal, you have to clear through sort of a security check. And uh, we, uh, we are in line and we're waiting and we get called up and, and uh, uh, there's a, a, a woman agent there, a female agent who's, I'm going to guess she's about in her mid-40s, uh, veteran, knows her stuff, uh, very professional. And uh, we come up and uh, being the polite uh, Canadians that we are, we say, hi, how are you? Nice to meet you. And we hand her our boarding passes for our flight to Calgary with our passports all neatly tucked together. All you, here you are. And... My wife is asking me questions about, well, what's going on over here? Because there's a whole glass wall, and behind the glass wall were customs agents for uh, people coming into the UK and who are going to stay in the UK or take a flight within the UK. So you had to clear customs first before you could move on or get up, go out of the terminal if you want. In our case, we were going to go up an escalator up to Terminal 4. And in the meantime, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the travel agent, the, the the ticket agent, the gal there, she just got, was working on the computer. And uh, I paid no notice. My wife paid no notice. We were, it was mayhem all around. If you ever been in Heathrow, millions of people all over the place. It's, it's a very active place. So uh, um, uh, we see her working. On the corner of my eye, I notice her. She's got our two uh, boarding passes. And she's ripping them in half, folding them up, ripping them in half again, and throwing them in the waste paper basket. And I thought, well, that's kind of odd. Uh, but and then I thought, well, you know, maybe the gate number has been changed or or maybe um, the flight time has been delayed or you know, who knows, right? She'll tell us. And so uh, I I don't mind it. I could continue on talking to my wife. And then uh, <coughs> the, the lady says to us, okay, you're all set to go. <coughs> she put the boarding passes <coughs> back in our passports. She handed our passports back. You're all set. Have a good flight. And uh they take care. I said, thank you very much. Thank you very much. And, and we just walked away and we ended up heading for the escalator and we then had to go up the escalator to the, uh, to the terminal four and we were in terminal four. Well, going up the escalator, it's about, it's a long one and uh, it takes about 30, 40 seconds to get to the top. And I had a hunch something, something's been changed, but I'm not sure. So I look at our tickets, our boarding passes 
And sure enough, we're not in 34 uh, E and F anymore or F and G or whatever those two letters were. You know, the, the back, second last row, third last row of the plane, uh, somewhere over there. We weren't, we weren't in those seats anymore. We were in row 12 uh, C and D. And I'm thinking row 12 C and D. What, what is that? Is, that? is that the first row of economy? Uh, there's no way it's first class. No way. Because they always have like four or five rows. I'm thinking business class? Nah, can't be. So um, uh, I grab my cell phone and I go to uh, seatguru.com. If you ever want to know what the inside of a plane looks like, any airline, any model of plane, seatguru.com is what you use. And you can look up the airline. I go to British Airways and I go to the airplane we're on uh, for the flight home. And I'm looking at row 12 and it's the last row of premium economy. How about that? She put us into two premium economy seats. Didn't say a word to us about it. Didn't tell us anything. Just handed our boarding pass and off we went. And I know that that is at least a $400 per person per way upgrade. Because I remember seeing the offer when I booked the tickets the first time to go when we were booking our flights originally to upgrade to premium economy. $800 more, I, and that was each way, $1,600 for the whole thing. I said, no, no, thank you. So we got this pleasant little surprise, and it was wonderful. Of course it was wonderful because the plane was full, and we were in our, we got on board the plane, and uh, they guided us down the hallway over here in the aisleway, and there were our seats. Even though they were the last two seats in economy, we had the full recline feature that the premium economy seats have. We had that. The footrest came out. My wife is very short. She appreciated the footrest very much. And then, of course, you got the padded uh, um, headphones instead of those sticky type kind that you shove in there and your ears get sore after a while or the real cheapo ones with the, you know, the quarter size pads that just leave a round mark on your ears. Oh, it was wonderful. The full headset there and uh, we had a menu. We had a choice of two or three meals. <laughs> it was Beautiful. Our own bathroom. There are only four rows. Uh, there's only 24 of us in premium economy. Oh, it was wonderful. So that was my little pre pleasant experience on an upgrade uh, out of nowhere, out of the blue, unannounced, no idea it was coming. And it made for a nice nine hour flight back home, let me tell you. And uh, I'd be curious if any of you have had any kind of similar experiences or anything else. Anyway, I was just kind of curious. Uh, let me see here what we got here. Um, uh, <laughs> Uh, we got uh, Teresa saying it's so mean that those crazy drinks were given to uh, to her by her husband. Uh, Elizabeth is saying I will definitely be here and give you all of our tips and tricks. That's for tomorrow. We're going to do that on on packing. Uh, Teresa is uh, saying uh, uh, last year my husband and try and my husband and I tried MSC Divana for the first time. We booked an inside room, and when we printed off uh, my luggage tags, they had upgraded us to a balcony. Whoa. <laughs> Oh, nice. That's pretty good. Uh, that's a beautiful little surprise. Uh, Charlie uh, Charlie Baum is here. He's saying, I tried to book the uh, seaside, but they said I had to have uh, two in the room. Is that ship policy? Uh, I'm traveling single uh, as I'm traveling. Has anyone come across this policy? Well, uh, uh, Charlie, I, I, I can understand them saying um, we can put you in a balcony by yourself, but not for a single fare. Uh, we can put you in the balcony at, you know, double the price as if there's two of you, uh, which, of course, you don't want to pay. I totally get that. A number of cruise lines, um, a Norwegian in particular, has definitely stepped up on this one. Uh, they've come up with uh, singles rooms, like suites for singles with a bed that's, you know, a single bed in a smaller room. And the entire, uh, these entire units, they're inside units. There's about eight or 12 of them, and they're they're, they're sort of a, a little cluster of singles suites unto themselves and they have their own little lobby area and their own little refreshment area um, outside of your room kind of thing. It's specifically designed for single travelers. Uh, but most other lines, um, uh, and in the case of MSC in this case, obviously, they haven't set up for singles cruising with supplemented rates. And so they're probably denying you the opportunity to get a cheap deal on a balcony as a single because they want you to pay for two people. And so uh, my advice to you is uh, uh, find a travel companion that's willing to go with you and, uh, you know, uh, and grab the, grab the unit. I mean, if it's, 
even if it's your best pal, uh, that you can set the beds up to be two single beds in the room and you're good to go. Uh, but if it's more than your best pal, uh, leave the bed together. <laughs> so whatever works. Anyway, that's uh, that's my two bits worth. Uh, Teresa is saying uh, Royal Caribbean Norwegian Carnival, where I have um, a high status, uh, has never done that for us, uh, giving us a better room for free. Oh, isn't that interesting? Teresa never got an upgrade, even with the high status that she has. She never got an upgrade to her room. Never got anything like that. That's interesting. Uh, same with celebrity. No free upgrades. See? There you go. Um, uh, Teresa saying, I've been upgraded to first class three times on airlines. That was a sweet deal. And wouldn't that be great? Yeah. I mean, you know, especially if you're a frequent flyer, I, I would imagine they would uh, they would do that. Um, yeah. What what can I say? Uh, Michael, <laughs> what, watch YouTube. Yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll let this comment in here. Uh, Michael is saying, <laughs> Michael Arnold, I, he's saying, MSCC side, watch YouTube. That was a gross as in PU cruise. Yeah. Michael has seen the video we're talking about. There's a video out there, a couple of them actually, but I saw one last night talking about the past. The person's talking about how this, this ship was smelling terribly and it's just awful. Uh, Charlie Baum is saying, I meant that I was able to pay double. They said I had to have two, even if I didn't show up. Oh man, what is that all about? Uh, Charlie, I can't believe that. Uh, you'd be, even if you paid double, they wouldn't let you have the room to yourself. That, that I don't understand, Charlie. I, I'm, I'm at a loss on this because for decades, uh, you know, singles would go on a cruise and they'd have to pay a premium price, even, you know, the fare plus 50% more, something like that, that they wouldn't let you book. That That really sh shocks me. I'm uh, I'm very surprised at that um, and befuddled. I, I don't understand that one at all. I, I can't understand why MSC would have that rule. Uh, if you're prepared to pay the double the fare, give me a balcony suite. Oh, I, I don't understand it. Uh, I'm not... Uh, I'm not sure what's going on there. I don't. I just don't. Uh, I just don't get it. Um, yeah, on the airline thing, you know, it's much more common, of course, far more common to get upgrades on, you know, on air on airlines. Get a boost from economy up to business class, or or be able to use maybe your uh, your American Express miles, or uh, or American Airline miles, or or, or uh, Discover card points, or you know, whatever you have. There's a lot of that going on all the time, and uh, sometimes you get some sweet deals depending on the time of year. Uh, if you're traveling sort of in a shoulder season, you might be able to upgrade or you can buy your entire flight for points for way fewer points than you would at the higher time of the year. Uh, there's some real good offers there. I did see a, a couple of YouTube videos the other day of a young couple that are traveling. Uh, they're trying to travel the world, uh, trying to travel over at least 100 different countries. And they're trying to go as far as they can, as much as they can on points uh, that they built up. And they have various credit cards that they've acquired over the uh, years with uh, sign up points and bonus points and you know all kinds of incentive points and this type of thing and uh, and uh, they've been you've been successful at, at navigating the interesting world of airline points uh, uh, to to travel but on the sh on the cruise ship side of things I think it's a far more uncommon thing um, although I, I know you know, those of us you know who follow the cruise game a little closer you know we see all the time advertisements where a cruise line will say um, you know, we got 20% off all fares and free cabin upgrades. Well, a free cabin upgrade, it can be very misleading because uh, you might book, say, uh, an inside room and you might get moved into a larger inside room. <laughs> or you're into a, an ocean an ocean view room with a, an obstructed view, like the, in front of you is the tender, the boat, the lifeboat, and they're moving you to an ocean view room where you don't see the lifeboat, right? That's an upgrade. The room's the same size. Same furniture. It's just a couple room, couple down the hall. Well, that's a higher upgrade. Um, it's rare to be able to come across a deal where you can buy, say, an ocean view room for four hundred fifty dollars on a cruise and be upgraded to the equivalent of an eight hundred dollar balcony room. That's really rare. Uh, and some of my folks here are saying, even as frequent cruisers, as you know, with high status, lots of repeat business and. Uh, they get gifts when they come back, you know, thanks for coming back for the 20th time. They still don't get free upgrades in their suites. Certain cruise lines just just don't have it as a, as a, as a perk, I suppose. Um, what else we got here? Uh, Angela saying, Charles, yes, I've gone solo and I've had to pay double minus taxes and tips. Uh, yeah, I can see that. Uh, uh, Ray, Ray Kelly's here. Hey, Ray, how you doing? Enjoy your videos and tips. Welcome, Ray. Uh, tell it, where are you watching us from, Ray? Where are you? Uh, everyone here is... Uh, 
uh, we're, we're talking about where we're located and what our high temperature is today. Uh, tell us where our area. That'd be good to know. Uh, welcome aboard. If you have any questions, by all means, uh, come on aboard. Otherwise, just, just follow the gang and uh, what we're up to. We're talking about upgrades right now. Uh, airline upgrades, uh, cruise line upgrades. Um, I can tell you an upgrade I got at the car rental counter in LAX. Um, I had rented a vehicle with, uh, I believe it was Hertz uh, for a week. And it was supposed to be like something like a, something like a, a Chevy Cavalier, you know, small two-door car. And I prepaid it and uh, reserved it and, you know, got off the airplane and grabbed the bus to the Hertz uh, car rental center and uh, came in there. And uh, uh, there were about four agents, uh, you know, available. There were no customers really, except for a, a couple of people. But there was one couple uh, that were, they were talking to an agent and they were in a heated discussion. <laughs> And the individual uh, was really PO'd about the car he was being offered for the rate that he was getting. And he didn't, he didn't like the deal at all. He was really angry. And he put up a steam. And, and I, I, you know, polite Canadian that I am, I know what I'm getting. I'm getting a, I'm getting a Chevy Cavalier. <laughs> so I'm just waiting my turn. And uh, the, the, uh, the agent had to call a manager over. And there were now three of them going at it. And the, the manager went back to the back and they came back out and finally they, they took care of this client somehow and he left with a vehicle. I don't know what it was. I don't know if he got his way half the way he wanted to go. I don't know. Then it was my turn and I'd been patiently waiting 10 minutes. I just enjoyed watching the show. I thought this was entertaining as get up. And uh, uh, the, uh, the agent calls me over and says, sorry for, to apologize. I'm sorry for that. I said, oh, not a problem whatsoever. I've got all the time in the world. Uh, Appreciate being uh, being brought up. I'd like to. Uh, uh, I've got a car. I've got a reservation with you. Oh, what's your last name? Told him my name. They found the reservation. He says, "Oh, okay, one minute. I'll be right back." I say, eh, "No problem. Take your time." He goes to the back. He comes back two minutes later, smiling, and uh, the manager comes out. He's smiling, and the manager goes off to the side, and the agent comes to the front. He says, uh, "Would you mind if we uh, upgraded you for no extra charge today?" I said, "I." Don't think I'd have a problem with that. Uh, what did you have in mind? <laughs> and he said, uh, how would you like a Lincoln Town Car? <laughs> I said, a Lincoln Town Car? He said, with leather interior and power everything. I said, I could handle that. Sure, that'd be great. Won't be as good on mileage, but who cares? So he handed me the keys to a beautiful Lincoln Continental. <laughs> I enjoyed driving the LA highways, baby. <laughs> this big boat of a car. The stereo is blasting away. The smooth is as right as a smooth as silk. And I had that car for a week for the price of a Chevy Cavalier. I think it was a hundred bucks for the week. What a deal. The guy before me, I think he left in a Ford Taurus. <laughs> I didn't see him. He didn't see me. <laughs> but uh, that was a lovely little thing. You know, sometimes these kind of things can happen to you. And, uh, you know, you just be the nice smiling customer and you never know how it goes. It doesn't happen every time, but you know, every once in a while. Uh, <laughs> uh, let's see, what do you got any comments here? Uh, um, uh, Doreen is here. Uh, Doreen, hi, Bruce. Missed it tonight. Just got our power back. Oh, Doreen, you lost your power. Oh, God, no. Uh, I hope you're going to be all right. Uh, um, <laughs> oh, my goodness. We've been talking today about uh, the MSC Seaside and how it smells. And we've been talking about how you get upgrades uh, at the airport or once in a while you try to get an upgrade on a cruise. And we've been talking about the new ship, the Encore for Norwegian Cruise Line. You could see the video later and uh, watch it then. It'll be fine. But, uh, yeah, we've covered a few things. Now, the last thing I'll mention today is uh, once in a while I'll come across stupid questions people ask. Um, I saw one earlier today. It was, uh, it was a person who was in the, uh, the line at a, at a cafeteria. And uh, they were holding a sandwich. It was a ham and cheese sandwich. And they were uh, showing the sandwich to the clerk, you know, the cashier, the poor cashier. And uh, they asked her, uh, what's inside the, what, what's in the ham and cheese sandwich? <laughs> I'm sure the, the eyes rolled to the back of her head. And I'm assuming it was a she, uh, the cashier. Oh, what a dumb question. But, you know, dumb questions. So I got a couple here for you. Um, First one, I, I found this, I thought this had to be a guy asking this one because no woman would ask a question like this. Women are too smart to ask a question like this, but a guy, 
the right guy would ask a question like this. Uh, and it could be me. Uh, how many pairs of pants should I pack for a seven night holiday? <laughs> 10, 15 pair? I mean, how many pair? Seven night holiday. How many pair of pants? Uh, I love that one. Um, this one I kind of like. Uh, I want to propose to my girlfriend while we're away. Um, can we get the beach to ourselves for the whole afternoon? <laughs> sure. Yeah, yeah. It's yours. We'll we'll put armed guards on the beach for you. You betcha. Yeah, knock yourself out. Um, which beach is closest to the ocean? I love that one. Uh, is Edinburgh in Glasgow? And uh, where can I go to see the Queen? Right now. Where can I go to see the Queen? Uh, I, lo I love these questions. <laughs> of course, my favorite cruise question is, what time is the midnight buffet? Can you tell me the time of the midnight buffet? I love that one. Oh, man. I come across some of these, and they just chortle me up. <laughs> How many pairs of pants do I need for a seven-night holiday? Can anyone tell me? Anyone? Please. Oh, my God. Oh, yeah. Anyway, there you go. Folks, I'm going to wrap it up today. Uh, I'm going to thank you all for watching me today. There's 25 years. It says there's 25 viewers on there right now. If there's 25 viewers, give me a thumbs up, you guys. If you're watching right now, please go to that thing. Hit that thumbs up and confirm it. Uh, it works on my, it really helps my Facebook accounts. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do. I'd love to have you on board as a subscriber. Hit the little bell notification icon. There's a little bell beside the one button there. Looks like a bell. If you touch that, you get an email. Every time I'm going live or posting a new video, you'll get notified. You'll be right up to speed with what's going on. Uh, tomorrow, 5 o'clock Eastern, uh, I'll be on again. I'm on uh, Monday to Friday, 5 o'clock Eastern. And on Saturdays, I'm on uh, uh, 2 o'clock Eastern. Six days a week, we're talking cruises. We're talking travel. We're talking upgrades we're talking you name it tomorrow we're talking packing tips for a cruise you're going on a cruise you've never been on a cruise before or you've been on 10 cruises and you still can't get it right for packing your stuff tomorrow we're talking packing tips on going on a cruise and i welcome all of you guys giving me tips for all of us to share uh, because there's some doozies out there there's some real good ones uh, that come up when we go I, I never thought of that so that's what we're going to talk about tomorrow i hope we all enjoy that um <laughs> and let's see here what's going on here. Uh, uh, thanks for everyone joining me today. Uh, uh, Doreen is asking, uh, Crash X is asking Doreen uh, about a Facebook page. And uh, uh, Paula saying goodbye. See, Paula, Tisha, joined our time. Thanks, Tisha502. Crash X, add yourself to Bruce's Facebook page, and I'll seek you out. I've got a Facebook page. I have a Twitter page. I have a uh, Instagram uh, account, too. Oh, my goodness. I'm a social butterfly. Thanks for watching today. I hope you had a good time. I had a great time. And uh, I'll look forward to talking to all of you guys tomorrow. Um, uh, the Facebook page is probably my name. Uh, I think that's what it is. Uh, Bruce Frommert, uh, F-R-O-M-M-E-R-T, Bruce Frommert. Uh, otherwise, uh, you can find it through uh, my YouTube page. No, no, you can't do it through my YouTube page. I used to have the logo up there. I think I took it away. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, good night, Teresa. We'll see you. Everyone's taking off. Thanks, you guys. Have a good night. This is Bruce with Traveling with Bruce saying good night, and we'll talk to you the next time. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.